Did you know that the classic board game Monopoly helped save countless British soldiers in World War II? I know, right? Now, I am not a history YouTube channel, okay? Most of the time I am sat here in my kitchen taste testing British crisps. But I saw this online and at first I thought it was fake. And then I gave it a bing and realized that no, this is actually true, this actually happened. And I was so shocked, I just wanted to share it with you guys. And maybe this is common knowledge to British people, but I had absolutely no idea. I don't know how this isn't made into a movie yet. Um, so grab a cuppa, have a seat, let's get comfortable. And without further ado, let's go. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last eight years. That actually doesn't really matter because this video has nothing to do about me. <laughs> but I love learning more about my second home here in the UK. And when I read this story, I just thought, this is wild. How is this true? So naturally we need to rewind. Our story starts after September 1939 during World War II. Now thousands of soldiers were captured throughout the war and held in prisoner of war camps. I think most of us know that. Right, I think that's like fairly common knowledge. As part of the Geneva Convention, charities and humanitarian groups like Red Cross were allowed to distribute care packages to these prisoners. And these packages were allowed to contain things that helped the physical well-being of the soldier, but also the mental well-being, which to be honest, I never really thought about. So we're talking things like food, medical supplies, clothing, personal hygiene, all the sort of like obvious physical stuff, but also entertainment. In particular, the game Monopoly was provided, which I had no idea. Now, the Germans in charge of some of these prisoner of war camps allowed these packages for two reasons. One, well, they had to. <laughs> but two, they also believed that allowing these packages, particularly the games and entertainment, the board games, would actually help the Germans in the long run because it would distract the prisoners and they would be less likely to escape. So they viewed it as pretty harmless, like Monopoly. <laughs> How are they gonna use Monopoly to escape, right? Just let them have it, let them be distracted, let them be somewhat happy, and they'll be less likely to try and escape. And potentially, it can make the Germans' job just ever so slightly easier. Let them have their board games. But the Germans didn't realize that the British Secret Service, MI9, had devised a plan. It was MI9 who created fake charities and humanitarian groups to provide rigged monopoly boards to help the POWs escape. Honestly, like no shade to the Germans because I don't know who would ever come up with that. Like how could you even begin to imagine or suspect a board game of being able to free a prisoner. <laughs> First up, pause. MI9. Are we familiar with MI9 or not? Because I had never heard of it. <laughs> MI5, sure. MI6, yes. MI9, no. And I don't know if this is just common knowledge to British people, but I had never heard of it. Now, MI9 was officially known as the British Directorate of Military Intelligence Section 9. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. And it was a covert department of the war office from 1939 to 1945. So as you can probably guess from the dates that this MI9 was in service or while it was, what's the word? Active. And its primary missions revolved around assisting allied prisoners of war in escaping and helping allied military personnel evade capture after being shot down or stranded behind enemy lines. So how did Monopoly get involved in this? Like, how? How does this work? I have learned so much researching this video and I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you would like to learn something else this year, why not check out today's sponsor, Rosetta Stone. As a Canadian, we are required to learn French in school. You just have to. It's an official language. You have to take French class. And let me tell you, I hated every second of it. I dropped that class as soon as I was legally able to in high school. I just could not get it. But as an adult, I've been curious that maybe I could learn French if I was taught in a different way. You know, maybe I'm not a total idiot. 
<laughs> and the way that I was taught French originally in school, in class, just didn't work for me. Using Rosetta Stone has been so much more interesting and actually enjoyable than how I remember French class. I usually do it here on the couch. Usually after I've finished work for the day, I sit down, I'll work on the next module and I'm actually enjoying it. One thing that really stands out for me, especially as a language learning app, is the voice recognition tool. So this actually scores your pronunciation when you say the phrase or the word, which I think is just absolutely wild. Il mange. Il mange. Elle cuisine. Elle cuisine. If you would like to join me in learning something new this year, definitely check out my link in the description. You're going to get up to 50% off all Rosetta Stone subscriptions, and that includes their lifetime subscription. With the lifetime subscription, you get access to all 25 languages on Rosetta Stone for life. So you can learn multiple languages over the course of your life, which is just crazy. And Rosetta Stone has a 30 day money back guarantee, which is always nice. So thank you so much to Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this video. I am actually enjoying my progress learning French in school when I was a kid, French. I just, the anxiety around it and being in the classroom and learning at everyone else's pace just like really freaked me out. So being able to do it myself at my own pace on the couch it's actually enjoyable. So don't forget to use my link in the description. I hope you can make use of our exclusive deal and let's get back to my video. So MI9 devised a plan and honestly, this is true genius, if you don't mind me saying. MI9 collaborated with John Waddington Limited. Do you recognize that name? That is the UK manufacturer of Monopoly. And their idea was that they would rig Monopoly board games. What? <laughs> Like this one. I actually bought this vintage Monopoly board off of some guy on eBay in Edinburgh. Shout out to whoever that was. I appreciate it. I've actually never seen this board version, this era of Monopoly. Uh, in Canada, we use typically like, of course there's a million uh, Monopoly variations, right? Of like various towns and cities, but the typical one in Canada is the US one. Shout out to my sister back in Canada. I had her film our Monopoly board game at home, which is a little bit beaten up, a bit old, but it is technically the American version. It's with dollars. The place names are American places. It's like the standard Monopoly. That's what we used back home. And that's what I played with as a kid. Monopoly was a special game close to my heart growing up as a kid, but I'll be the first to admit, I am not a good loser. <laughs> and I'm actually quite miserable to play against. So to all my family and friends who have ever played Monopoly against me, God bless you, I'm so sorry. I'm not really like that, I promise. Anyway, we're getting off topic. So this is the Monopoly version that I bought on eBay. It's hard to know exactly what year this is from, but as you can tell based on the imagery and what have you, this is, it's not a recent one. Do you guys wanna play around while we're here? It'll only take like four days. Have a look at that, all right. This is fun, I've never actually seen this version before like the names are obviously different Regent Street Oxford Street Bond Street like those are not the names that I'm familiar with this is fun you guys history how cool anyway what was I talking about MI9 okay rewind now how could this seemingly very simple board game oh we've even got like the old dice and the little figures what figure were you guys I was always the cannon, which doesn't seem to be included, um, or the top hat, which also we don't have. So I will take the ship, if you don't mind. You guys can be the little, the little iron, because everybody hates that one. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm getting so off topic. How could this board game be changed in any way that would actually help someone in a prisoner of war camp, right? How is that 
even possible. Now these Monopoly kits were rigged in several ways that would be vital to help someone escape. So you're thinking about escaping a prisoner of war camp, what is one thing that you think might come in handy? Did you guess a map? Now unfortunately, including a map in this is actually not very helpful because maps tear, they can get wet, they are noisy, and they are very, very obvious. So MI9 came up with an ingenious idea, and that is to provide silk maps. The idea is they're durable, way more than paper, but they're also silent when they're unfolded. They were long lasting, they were easy to fold up into tiny little bits. If they got wet, that's okay. It was just honestly genius. Next up, what do you think would be helpful to aid in your escape? You've got a map, but what else could you use? How about a compass and a file? So miniature compasses and files were hidden within the sets Obviously extremely helpful for navigation, but also to cut through any sort of barriers that they needed to get through. So you got a map, you got a compass, you filed your way through some sort of fence, you're out. Now what? You're gonna need money. So MI9 also hid real currency within these boards, a variety of different currencies, so it would help prisoners obviously get somewhere, but they could also bribe people if needed. Or perhaps you just needed some supplies. Say you get out, but you've run out of food or you've run out of whatever. You need money to buy things. <laughs> Don't know if you knew that. Now, obviously there are a variety of different prisoner of war camps all over the place. So how do you get the right rigged board to the right person? MI9 thought of that and they came up with a hidden code. So for instance, let me get this out of the way. If there was a full stop after Marlebone, Mar, Marlebone, Marlebone, <laughs> after this particular station, if there was a full stop, it meant that this rigged Monopoly board had an Italian map. Where is Mayfair? Do you guys see Mayfair? Mayfair, the most expensive one. If there was a full stop after Mayfair, that meant that this rigged board had maps for Norway, Sweden, and Germany. If there was one after free parking, that meant Northern France and Germany. If it was a non-rigged, regular, straight, classic Monopoly board, there would be a mark after patent applied for. So there were some of these, but it didn't mean all Monopoly boards were rigged. And soldiers were briefed that before their missions, if they were to be captured, they needed to look out for these special monopoly boards. Now, by the end of World War II, it's estimated that more than 35,000 allied POWs escaped from German war camps. Unfortunately, it is impossible to know how many of these allied POWs escaped because of these rigged monopoly boards. But I think it's fair to say, in my humble, unprofessional opinion, after researching this video, that these kits played a significant role in aiding some of these escapes. And I think this whole story just goes to show the utter brilliance and creativity of the British people. Thank you so much to Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out my link in the description to get your exclusive deal. If you'd like to watch more content, which would be totally awesome, why not check out this one where I react to British humor? But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.